Howdy everyone and welcome to the Movo TX gear review channel today where we're out in the field, my favorite local campsite amongst the oak forest, and we are going to review my first gear Tex Sport Cliffhanger. This is a single person, um, medium sized I would say, highly capable backpacking and even car camping tent. You can use this in a car camping tent. It feels, I think it's big enough and capable enough. It's large room domey enough to encompass multiple applications and multiple types of usage. Okay, so I've had this for four and a half, like four years now. And I purchased it on amazon.com for like 45 bucks. And I use it all the time. My son uses it all the time. It's, I think it's a really great scout tent. Um, and my son, you know, he's not really careful with a lot of his gear, by the way, either. So this thing has held up remarkably well um, over the years. Okay, so this is the kit that you're seeing here. It's well used at this point. Okay, so this is um, A, a used item. This is not new and no, there's no unboxing here about this. Um, number two is, again, I'm a purchasing consumer. So this is not a free review sample and I'm not getting any sort of compensation or kickback from the manufacturers or retailers at all for this. Okay, so the other thing too is I've added a cheap blue and silver Home Depot tarp as my footprint. So all my tents I pack out with a tarp footprint. Uh, that for me, it's like duct tape, it's like bank line, it's like paracord. There's a million and one uses for tarp plastic out in the field. And think of it as added safety and redundancy in case of a leakage or something really bad happening to you, okay? This can get you through your weekend very, very comfortably, okay? So thumbs up for that. So here's the kit. Um, usually what I do first is set out the tarp footprint. So there's my other tent. I'm reviewing a bunch of tents today here at the site. So that's kind of why you're seeing what you're seeing. So let's set up the footprint first. So this is by far the easiest tent for me to set up. I just had no problem setting this tent up. It's super duper easy. Okay, so there we go. So that's pretty much it. There's your footprint area. I always like to set up the silver side out just because it's easy to see in low light conditions. Okay, let's bust out the poles. Okay, so there's a rain fly in here as well as the tent mesh inner wall. Set the rain side aside. Okay, so set the oh, so there's a so there's a puncture spot right here one time that I did and I had to repair it in the field with duct tape. So thumbs up for duct tape, for sure. There's definite need for duct tape out here. Okay, so this tent comes with two poles. They're both fiberglass. Okay, so there's your source of your $45. Um, I've been contemplating upgrading with aluminum poles or at least making one of these poles out of aluminum. But I haven't really gotten around to that yet. So normally, by the way, I like to set up my poles first, but nonetheless, I'm doing it kind of, I'm doing it kind of backwards here. Okay, so you guys are all familiar with budget priced uh, uh, fiberglass poles. Okay, so there's the first one. And let's get the second one out. So this is what I would consider a, there's a half crossover arch dome type of construction. Imagine a crossover dome tent that you basically cut in half on one of the poles. So there's the first one. Here's the second one, just like that. And if you're familiar with pole and hook construction, that's all this is. So instead of pole and hooking a full crossover dome, your pole and hooking, <laughs> oopsie, got the wrong hook. Got to make sure I grab the right one. There you go. You're, you're, anyways, your pole and hooking half of one. There we go. Okay, so there's your first arch over. And let's do the second one. So there's two ends to this to this shorter pole there's a rubber tip and a metal insert tip 
okay? And the metal insert tip goes down into here. And it simply arches over, just like this. And you insert the rubber tip into this pocket here, just like that. Then you clip all the way down, just like that. Okay, so there's your vestibule area, there's your tent inner walls, and let's get the spikes out. A lot of spikes here. I think these spikes are probably the weakest link in this tent kit. So the OEM factory ones are kind of thin. So I've added these Coglins, Coglin spikes. Got them at my local Walmart, I believe, for a few bucks. Money well spent. So some of the Amazon reviews uh, are commenting on this tent that the reviewers broke the fiberglass poles. And I suspect there's some uh, quality variation from the manufacturers for that because my poles here have been totally fine. Have not had any problems with them. And, and like I said earlier, my son is not exactly a careful camper with his gear. He's actually pretty rough with it actually. So, yeah, let's put this last one in. Okay, carefully step that down. By itself, it is not freestanding, so you're going to want to stake down the four corners there pretty securely. And we've got one more stake point right here. But I want to make sure I show you. Okay, there we go. That one doesn't have to be that tight. Okay, let's get the rain fly set up. Okay, so this tent is about as easy as it gets when it comes to the rainfly. Just, just snap in all four buckles, or, or f all five buckles on the corner, and that is it. Last one. Pull it tight. Okay, and the very last spikes you want to put in are for the door. There we go. Okay, there you have it. That is the Texas Sport Cliffhanger First Gear. $45, Amazon.com. So one thing you want to do is you want to make sure, if you use a, a footprint, you want to make sure the footprint does not extend out from beyond the rainfly because it'll catch rainwater if rainwater should come down on you. Okay? So there's a little door flap here on each side, a little arch door flap here, a little flap here for ventilation. Not a whole lot of ventilation, so you want to make sure you kind of pull out your rain fly as much as you can, okay? There's some guy lines here that I'm not going to attach here right now, but if you can imagine that being guy lined out that way. And another one over here being guy lined out this way. Okay, so let's give you guys an interior view. Okay, there we go. This simply rolls up 
like that. Okay, and here's your doorway, just like that. With a mesh interior. Okay, so you've got some, a lantern hang point up in here in the ceiling. Okay, there's a little gear pocket right over here. Okay, and I could actually pull this out a little bit. I didn't do a very good job pulling this out, but I probably will pull out that back corner a little bit more. Perhaps. So it's a little more even. Okay, there we go. Hopefully that'll stretch things out just a little bit more. And there you go. Okay, nice bathtub construction. Urethane treated uh, floor there. And there you have it. So this is what I would consider lower elevation California four season capable. Okay, so by that I mean um, not snow loading. Okay, so we're talking California lower elevation, 4,000 feet and less, um, heavy rain, heavy wind, hailstorm conditions. We've had this out in all those types of conditions and it's been totally fine. I have not had any problems with rainwater leakage or anything like that. All the stitches are tape, are tape sealed on the inside on the rainfly as well as the bathtub floor. Okay. And it's pretty much good to go. A generous rain flap over the zipper forms over the zipper. Okay. Never had any problems with the rain coming in this way at all. Okay. So there's the footprint area. There's the vestibule area. Um, very typically, I'll just stash, we'll stash our packs right out in this area. So let's bust out the tape measure and give you guys some actual dimensions here. So I'm going to pull aside the bug mesh. My camera on my headband tends to get caught up in these. There we go. Okay, so let's do this. Give you guys some actual dimensions here on the inside. So for length, we are looking at about 78 inches. Let's see here. 70, and maybe less than that. 76 inches for length. And for the width, we're at about 28 inches in width. Okay, so that's just enough room for a large size sleeping pad. I'm five foot 11. I have no problems with um, sleeping in here. Um, the sides walls here do tend to slope in just a little bit. So if, if I'm if I'm inched down or inched up a little bit, my head or my feet can butt up against kind of this area here. But it hasn't really been a huge huge concern with me. So I would say 5'11 is pretty much the tallest you can get in here okay anything longer than that and you know you have to compromise your sleeping positions a little bit okay so for me personally I'm a side sleeper and I tend to curl up into a ball when I sleep so it's really not that big of a deal okay so the vestibule area is fairly large actually so the vestibule extends out a good 29 inches it's been a great tent for us we have a we don't really have any major complaints about it so other than the tents, the, the spikes, the cheap spikes, the OEM spikes are pretty lame. You're going to want to update the spikes um, at least to the thicker Coglins ones that I referenced earlier. So one nice thing about this is the coloration. Love the green color. It's a neutral enough color that it doesn't shift your eyes uh, color spectrum at all compared to my other tents, which are red and orange and other colors, um, it kind of messes with your vision after a while. You know, being in a red dome environment, it tint shifts you and it's kind of un unnerving a little bit here. But this nice bright green color, it's awesome. It's really, really awesome. Really no complaints. Okay. So thanks a lot guys for tuning into the channel. Please feel free to post comments or questions down below. I'll try and answer them as I get to them. But everybody stay safe out there and enjoy the outdoors. I'll catch you guys later.